Hello, my name is Mike and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. We are here at the Storm Coast, the second open area of the world. We have just recruited a Kunari companion. Beneath those waves. Yes, it's quite the mystery, Solus. I'm talking about our Kunari companion. He's a soldier class and he seems to be a bit of a tank, although he seems to be unlike any Kunari I've ever met before, so I look forward to learning about him. But right now we are here on business. We've got a bunch of busy work we need to do, close rifts, find items, etc, etc, but most importantly, the Grey Wardens are somewhere around here. I've met a, quite a few Grey Wardens, maybe I'll see a familiar face. Maybe Mike the Second's brother, or Ogren, as far as I can tell, he, he was still in the Grey Wardens, or Nathaniel, another familiar face, could be any of those guys. Okay, that's badass. Uh, <laughs> Let's try not to get eaten, shall we? Um, a giant is dueling a dragon over here. Well, this certainly isn't boring. I have no idea if I- Ooh, there's a rift over there I gotta go close. Pardon me, I see busy work I need to go do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was craving excitement, but I don't know if I want to be party to this. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't throw boulders at me. Okay, looks like we might have to take out this giant. He's only level 8, I'm sure I'll be able to get him, right? Okay, he's put a pushover. <laughs> God damn. I can attack either of his legs or his head. I'm gonna go for the legs. It might be a weakness. Now, he can still throw boulders, but yeah, just re reduce his mobility. That'll probably be smart. It's a giant. It's definitely tough. Its hide is difficult to burn through. Yeah, it's immune to all of our fire magics. It just keeps picking up boulders and throwing it at us. Let's try and finish his head. <laughs> he dropped it on top of a Kunari's head. I can see his head health bar, it's... Oh, he's dead. Good job. Good job, Iron Bull. And team, we did great. Well, that was a bit more exciting than I was expecting. Uh, that dragon... Ooh, wow. Ooh, the water effects are actually really good. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes. I got boring things I gotta pick up, like spindle weed and elf fruit. This water is pretty... No! Okay, can't go in the water. Got it. Got it. I'll just stand here at the coast and admire it. I can barely see this when it's so high up, but there it goes. Now no one can see it because it's been destroyed. Not a bad spot to camp. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. One more campsite to set up. Yes, yes, looks nice. Looks nice. Nothing to report, sir. Nothing to report? Good. I don't want to do any more quests for you either. Ooh, found some papers down here. It's interesting. Can't do anything with them. They seem out of place. It seems like I should be able to do something with them. But if you say so. It says I'm supposed to be looking for signs of the wardens. I have no idea what signs you're expecting me to find. I think these papers should suffice. These seem out of place, but I cannot click on them. I'm pretty sure this is a sign of the warden. Like, I'm almost certainly that's why they're here, but I can't click on them. Let's look around. I'm looking around. I see these papers. I know these are signs of the Great Wardens, but I'm not allowed to click on them. The interface in this game is just outright maddening. Hooray! I somehow just clicking on it repeatedly and mashing the scan button allowed me to click on it. A Grey Warden's journal. He is not here. We have searched thoroughly. Looks like the Grey Wardens are looking for somebody. This camp was abandoned some time ago. Well, there are three other spots somewhere around here we need to check to see if they're there. And here are some more papers. A Grey Warden's journal, more pages. I grow more convinced that if he was ever here, he is now long gone. Still, it would not do for us to miss him through laziness, and he was one of our most skilled warriors. They're looking for a Grey Warden warrior. I guess it could be Carver. They could be looking for Carver. Or it could be just maybe someone I've never met before. It's possible that's the case too. Two down, two to go. More Grey Warden notes. Still no trace of him, though I could feel the dark spawn in the ground below. Yes, I haven't seen any dark spawn actually, now that I think about it. There were even dark spawn in the previous game, weren't there? So maybe they might show up again in this game. The dreams continue as they do every night. They make it hard for us to sleep, but we must persist. Well, it sounds like these dreamers aren't dwarves. It's not a dwarven Grey Warden, because we know that dwarves don't dream. 
I sing the song of Andrew Will to myself. All right, so we have some... This belonged to the warden. Yeah, yeah, thanks for stating the obvious, man. We got elves and or humans, Grey Wardens, looking for some kind of Grey Warden warrior. Not sure why, though. Found the fourth one! I have found the fourth Grey Warden documents. We searched the area, but found no sign. If he was here, it was some time ago. The fishermen in the area are friendly. Unlike some, they remember how the Grey Wardens fought to save Ferelden in the last blight. They had little, but they shared with us some of their fish. They are friendly folk. I hope they find some peace. The Wardens must have moved on. They're searching for someone. On Warden business, maybe? Secret missions or whatever it is they get up to when there's no blight. Whoever the Wardens are seeking, he's led them away from here. Well, I guess the Grey Wardens aren't in the area, so... Maybe we'll find their trail later. There are a few more things we can do here, close a few more rifts, and maybe pick up a couple of small minor quests. I don't know, let's just try and knock out as much as we can while we're here. It's a shame we didn't find the Grey Wardens, because that would have been interesting, but maybe some other time. And a possible campsite location, maybe? You want to set up camp? Yes, I do! And this is the final campsite. We have now established all camps. Good, nothing to report to you either. A couple more rifts somewhere around here? Let's try and find those and close those up. I found the statue. I saw this a long, long ways away, and I've made my way over here. This is the Orizamaran statue, the Dwarven statue. I don't know if this is what I was coming down here for. I don't think there are any rifts in here, but I am curious as to what we'll find. It's very dark. Giant spiders is what we'll find, apparently. We'll just burn them out of our way. Well, this is an intricate place. Ah, there is a terror in the rift here. Okay, it's a good thing I came down here. It's a very lovely area. For all my complaints about this being a giant open world game with so much that's nothing to do, I believe I sense one of the artifacts of my people. There are some really nicely designed places. There we go. Close that one. And there's a nice Orzammarin statue over here. What's this glowy thing? Oh, it's just another one of those star puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Astrarium. Mm hmm. Do this mini game. Collecting the dots, yep, because I'm five years old, so I'm glad I'm doing this puzzle again. And there's some kind of cave here, very well hidden. What's in here? More spiders? Deep stalkers! Oh, no little tiny dinosaurs with the face of a leech. Yeah, those things are creepy. Let's kill them. Hello, dragonling. I didn't want to attack you, but you're in my way, so please burn to death and die. And another astrarium. Yep, connect the dots. Yes, yes, yes. And now I get to hunt down more shards. Mm-hmm. One and two. There's a third one around here somewhere. Oh, where, oh, where could this shard be? So, ex there it is. Good. And yet another tear in the veil. Just deal with these shades and knock it out. Reminds me of the Heron, only colder. Fascinating. Pardon me while I close this final rift in the area, and we're done. We're done with the Storm Coast for now. We've cleared out a lot of enemies, done all the stupid aquariums. I've found a lot of shards, and I've I didn't find the Grey Wardens, so we're gonna we're just gonna head back. There's not a whole lot here now. Back here in Haven now. We didn't find the Grey Wardens after all, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Maybe these companions will cheer me up. Iron Bull, I would like to know more about you. They've got good form. Cullen's putting his Templar training to good use. Oh, you know he's a Templar? What gave it away? Did Cullen tell you he was a Templar? He's not wearing the armor. He didn't have to. It might not be a Templar shield, but it's a Templar holding it. He angles the shield just a bit down. Helps direct fire or acid away, so it doesn't spray right into your face. Kalari learned the same thing when we trained to fight to Vinter Mages. Your Templar's doing good work. Yes, he is. I'm impressed by what Cullen has accomplished with the troops. Damn right. It takes time to build a group into a team, but he's got their loyalty. Now he just needs them to make a decent shield wall, and they'll be good to go. Biggest problem for the Inquisition right now isn't on the front line. It's at the top. You've got no leader. No Inquisitor. Liliana's kind of our leader, and we have Cassandra. Well, maybe I should lead. Cullen, Cassandra, Liliana. Who out of the four of us do I think would be the best leader? Cullen. Cullen commands the troops. Cullen has the loyalty of our soldiers. Yeah, 
He's shaping up to be a good commander. But he's building an army, not a movement. My people don't pick leaders from the strongest, or the smartest, or even the most talented. We pick the ones willing to make the hard decisions and live with the consequences. That sounds more like Liliana. Ah, who knows? Maybe you seal the breach. The Chantry gets off its ass and all those soldiers go home and get fat. You think? It could happen. It won't. But it could. Yeah, I suppose it could. I wanted to talk to you about you, though. I'd like to know more about the Kunari. You writing a book? I'm quite interested, honestly. What I've heard about them sounds fascinating. What you've heard was mostly horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you want to know? I want to know why you're unlike any Kunari I've ever met. It's a military autocracy, right? How do the Kunari rule themselves? It's pretty simple. We've got the matriarchy, the priesthood, and the military. The priesthood figures out how Kunari should live in theory. The matriarchy makes it work in practice. And the military keeps the Kunari safe from outside threats. Not what I was expecting. Does it actually work like that? Is there much infighting? Not like you're thinking of. People disagree, yeah, but the priests are there to solve disagreements. Here in Orlais, politicking comes from people putting their own gain ahead of the gains of society. If you do that among the Canari, the Bin Hasrath set you straight. Or kill you. Hmm. Okay. It looks like maybe I was wrong about you. You're not a Canari rebel, or an outsider, or a mercenary who's left the Kuhn. You're just someone with a bit more personality than any other Canari I've met. Okay then. What would happen if Thedas fell to the Kuhn? Do you ever think about what would happen if the Kunari conquered Orle or Ferelden? Some folks, like Cassandra or Colin, would do fun if they didn't die fighting. Those two love rules. But the mages. Look at Solus. All that wandering in the Fade. They'd at least kill him. <laughs> Both Sarah and Varric would mouth off until they ended up re-educated. Drugged until their minds broke. So, to answer your question, no. I don't think about it much at all. I suspect maybe you do. The word Kunari, is that the race or the religion? Or both. Both. Kind of. The humans and elves who follow the Kuhn are the Vidathari. The Kunari who break away from the Kuhn are Talvasha, deserters. Yes, and what about those who predate the Holy Book? What about Kunari who existed before the Kuhn? The people we came from. They're called the Kasith, but we don't use that word for the race. I feel like I've learned a decent amount of information about the Kunari, but it's time for me to be going. See you later, Bull. See ya. You don't mind if I call you Bull, do you? Or do you prefer Mr. Bull? What about your friend here, Cream, the creme of the crop? Can I help you with anything? Let's discuss Iron Bull. I'd like to know more about the Iron Bull. The Chief. Last time I met him, he saved my life. I never thought I'd work for a Kunari, but he grows on you. He's not like any commander I've ever worked for. That's for damn sure. And he's not like any Kunari I've ever met. Is it strange to work for Kunari? He hasn't tried to convert us to the Kuhn, if that's what you're asking. The Bull's charges don't care who you light a candle for, so long as your shield stays up. If he hadn't told me he was Ben Hasroth, I'd have thought he'd left that life behind. Yeah, I'm surprised he told you. I didn't expect he'd tell you all that he was a spy. Not the whole band, but those who've been around long enough to trust. He figures most of us would find out sooner or later, and it should come from him. Eyes to eye, he says. It's never messed up a job. He just writes letters back home. Lots of the boys write letters back home. You say he saved your life. Elaborate, please. How did a Tavinta soldier wind up in a Canari spy's mercenary company? I wasn't a soldier at the time. I was in some trouble, trying to flee Tavinta. A tribune and his men caught me in a border town tavern. They meant to make an example of me. Bull killed them. Gave up his eye doing it. Patched me up and asked if I was looking for work. I've been putting up with his jokes ever since. Wait, he gave up his eye? That's how he lost the eye. Yes. The guards had me on the tavern floor when Bull came inside and yelled for them to stop. One of them saw trouble coming and figured he'd finish me off. The guard had a flare. Bull put himself between me and the blow. They can't, idiot. Didn't even know me. Wow. Sounds like he's got a lot more compassion than I would imagine a Kunari to have. How's Iron Bull as a commander? If you know what you're doing and hold up your end, he's easy. He doesn't accept any less. If he keeps us alive, he leads from the front, and if you've an idea that'll win the fight, he listens. I've seen bands whose captains had to prove they were swinging the biggest sword. Bull isn't like that. 
The judges might give me more lip than you'd expect, but every one of us would lay down our lives for the big ass. He seems like a really good companion. We'll talk later. Yes, I think Iron Bill White, he might be one of the companions I take along a lot more frequently than, say, Sarah. Because while Sarah is amusing, Iron Bull does seem a bit more serious and a surprisingly down to earth. He's actually, a, yeah, compared to Sten from the first game, who I didn't like at all, I'd really like Iron Bull. May I ask you about the Chantry? It is difficult to say what becomes of the Chantry now. They have no Templars, no leadership, and no one left who is worthy of succeeding the Divine. It has fallen apart when everyone needs it the most. I ache to think what this will mean in the days to come. Maybe we should just let the Chantry fall into ruin. Do you really believe the Chantry is worth preserving? I do. But given your beliefs, I'd hardly be surprised if you disagree. Cast the Chantry aside and new problems replace old ones. We will have learned nothing from history. The people need stability, and the Chantry needs a new purpose. Andraste had a dream for us. It can still be achieved. What do you think the new purpose will be? So what should that new purpose be? A dedication to what is truly important. Instead of building cathedrals and sewing gowns for the divine, the Chantry used to spend its coin feeding the poor. If we are to spread the Maker's word across the world, we must do so with open hearts and open hands. Who do you think the new divine's gonna be? Is it anybody I know? Come on, you have the inside scoop? Will the Chantry replace Divine Justinian? They will try. Once the priests withdraw for the Grand Consensus, it is against Chantry law for them to emerge without naming a new divine. Sometimes it takes days, or weeks, or even months. The problem now is that no clear successor to Justinia exists. All worthy clerics died with her at the Conclave. What if they can't reach an agreement? What if they're just in there for years? So what happens if they can't agree on someone? Theoretically, they will argue until exhaustion takes them or they see reason. Practically, however, if the grand consensus goes on too long, the Chantry will crumble. Any cleric with ambition but little sense will see this as her one chance, and plenty of such clerics exist. We shall see what happens. The Inquisition must act in the meantime. Oh, good. The politics of church life. If they do choose a new divine, will you serve her? That depends on whether she would have me. I am a rebel now, remember? And even if she would, I do not know. It would depend on what type of divine she is. I am no longer in a position to follow blindly, and no new divine could expect such obedience now. I feel like I'm learning a lot about the church. I'm surprised you rebelled against the Chantry. I left my own order when they took the wrong path. It is no different. But in neither case did I stop caring. Indeed, I care so much that I feel drastic action is necessary. I suppose history shall one day judge my actions. Maybe. Maybe they will. That's all for now. How's it going, Colin? Did you need something? I grew up in Ferelden, near Hong. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the Blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. Tell me about Kirkwall. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Indeed. The relations between mages and Templars fell apart. The apostate blew up the Chantry, and the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. Don't forget about the first Enchanter becoming a demon! That's probably the most important part. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. How did it end? What happened then? The Templars should have restored order. The Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion, turned on her own men. I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her, in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. I don't blame yourself. Sometimes these things sneak up on you. You know Varix from Kirkwall? Varix from Kirkwall? Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely of Varix's assistance. 
Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's bad for my health. Well, if it's coming from Varric, don't worry. You're probably wearing that expression just the right amount. See you later! Need something? Tell me about Red Lyrium. The Red Lyrium we found at the temple seemed to upset you. My brother Bartrand and I sort of discovered Red Lyrium during an expedition in the Deep Roads. Yes, tell me about that. We located an ancient taig, so old it barely looked dwarven. There was this idol there made of it. Bartrand brought it back to the surface, and, well, everything's gone downhill from there. What's going on with your brother? So what is it? Just another kind of Lyrium? The red stuff is Lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. Hmm. Most lyrium is typically blue, isn't it? And the red lyrium is powerful. Really powerful stuff. Maybe green lyrium is what's infused in my hand. That would explain why the hole is so much more dangerous than we imagined. How did the red lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. As far as I knew, there was only one small piece of the original idol we brought out of the Deep Roads. And it's locked in a vault in Kirkwall, one I had built by the mining cast especially to hold it. Now you have a piece of it, don't you? Why do you have Red Lyrium? My brother kept a sliver when he sold it. I'm pretty sure he held on to it because it was already talking to him. That little shard drove him mad. I had him taken to a sanitarium and eventually found the fragment in his house. We brought the shit to the surface, Bartrand and I. I wanted to find out if there was a way to shut it up. So far, it looks like the answer is no. Dang, I was kind of hoping that decision would play out in our favor. Oh well. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. I've had a few alchemists studying it in Kirkwall, in shifts. And Green Lyrium tears open the space-time continuum. Talk to you later, Varric. And now I have the option of seeking out Red Lyrium deposits. We just talked about why that's a bad idea. Why would I go looking for the stuff? You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. How do you know Josephine, Liliana? You seem to know Josephine quite well. I met her a long time ago, but we didn't become good friends until years later. After the blight, in fact. I'd just returned to Val Rayo, and she welcomed me back by throwing a diplomatic ball. She was the Antivan ambassador at the time, you see. The ball was... all right. Too many politicians. At midnight, Josie and I left to find a real party. We've been friends ever since. Hooray! I wonder if Mike the First hadn't romanced Liliana. Maybe Liliana would have stricken up a romance with her. What do you consider a real party? It's not a real party until someone's small clothes are pinned to a chantry board. <laughs> and that's all I'm saying about it. I see. We'll talk later, you sultry minx, you. We can continue this conversation later. You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. It's odd to see them accepting a mage as their hero. Especially a Dalish elf. One look at your face and it's clear you were never part of a circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast, and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. Ah, so you want me to turn in demon body parts? I've found a few things. I found something the demons left behind. Can you use it? Yes, that's very helpful. Just leave it there and the Tranquil and I will examine it. Okay then, if I find more demon body parts, I'll bring them to you. Have fun. Gentlemen, you're probably wondering why I called you here. You must answer one question. How do we defeat the bat? I sent somebody to build watchtowers. Cullen has built the watchtowers. Good job. And Red Jenny wanted bees. Did you find bees for her? We have located an apiary to supply us. When the idea was presented, the beekeeper tented his fingers and sneered, Of course. You have received a jar of bees in a grenade recipe. Thank you. That's weird. And contacting the Dalish clan Lavellen. You've done that? They didn't have a whole lot of gold, but they did give us 10 blood lotus. Okay, thank you for the crafting stuff. And now that I've distributed the points over again, we have dispersed. 
I don't feel like we got a whole lot accomplished today, but we did clear up the Storm Coast, so we won't have to go back there unless something important appears. We didn't find the Grey Wardens, we do still have a second lead. We were informed about a Grey Warden named Blackwall somewhere in the Hinterlands, so that is where we're going to go next time. We're going to go back to the Hinterlands and see if we can find this person named Blackwall. Hopefully that person will give us a lead as to where the rest of the Grey Wardens are. Until then, my name is Mike, and this has been Dragon Age Inquisition. Thank you for joining me.